Jennifer Green. Present. Joining from Ypsilanti. Phyllis Herzig. Present uh, from Ann Arbor. Bruce Estrain. Um, representing Ann Arbor and reporting from uh, upstate New York. Jennifer Hackendorn. Present calling from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Brenda McKinney. Present Superior Township. Jasmine Cooper. Present from Ann Arbor. Allison Foreman. Present uh, calling in from Toledo. Annie Somerville. Present City of Ypsilanti. Jeff Quorum. Great, thank you. Um, any members of the public want to make public comment? If you would like to do so, you can raise your hand. Seeing none, we'll move on past the commission response to public participation to the approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion? So move. Second. second. Move by Brenda, second by Margie. Any discussion? We could vote. Julia Ballard? Yes. Marta Larson? Yes. Marie Gress? Yes. Margaret Reynolds? Yes. Elizabeth Thompson? Yes. Jennifer Green? Yes. Yeah. Phyllis Herzig? Yes. Bruce Estrain? Yes. Jennifer Hackendorn? Yes. Brenda McKinney? Yes. Jasmine Cooper? Yes. Allison Foreman? Yes. Annie Somerville? Yes. Motion passes. Fantastic. Next is our discussion items. We have Megan and Jane from County Parks and Rec to talk to us about their um, comprehensive master plan. They wanted to talk to us in particular to get some feedback um, and all that on older adults. So Megan, I'm gonna hand it over to you. Um, let me, I'm gonna make you co-host in case you wanna share your screen for anything, but you certainly okay. don't do. Thank you. Can you all hear me okay? Yes. Okay, yes. great. I was having some tech problems this morning. Uh, thank you for having us at your meeting today. I really appreciate it. Um, hello, Commissioner McKinney. Hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, um, so we were introduced to this great group by Commissioner McKinney. She's one of our parks commissioners. And so she mentioned <clears throat> it would be really great to reach out to you all. And so I had an opportunity to speak with both uh, Marta and Marie and just kind of talk a little bit about our process. Um, and so I'll, I'll kick it off and then I'll turn it over to Jane. So um, Washington County Parks and Recreation Commission updates their recreational master plan every five years. And so we're in the process of doing that again. We have contracted with Pros Consulting and Jane Miller is of Pros Consulting, but from the area. So it's really great because we get both kind of the local knowledge, but also the expertise of Pros Consulting and Jane from all of her experience with the recreational background as we're going through this update process. So um, this year, some we have um, <clears throat> done a series of different public outreach sessions. So we've been meeting over with a variety of different groups across the county. Um, you are one of those groups. So again, I appreciate your time in, in giving your feedback. Um, but we have met with, a, we're trying to meet with, you know, youth representatives, um, representatives from, you know, different quadrants of the county. Um, and so really our master planning process is only as good as the feedback we can receive from the public. So with that, I will turn it over to Jane. She'll kind of outline a little bit of what we're doing. Jane, I'm happy to run through a PowerPoint if you'd like me to. Um, and then we'll just start getting feedback from you all. Great. Thanks, Megan. Again, thanks for having us. We're very, Megan, as Megan indicated, we're really excited to be here and hear your experiences and perspectives about the county park system. Um, as Megan mentioned, um, I'm a principal at Pros Consulting. We're a national uh, parks and recreation open space consulting firm. Um, I am actually based in Washtenaw County. I used to work for the city of Ann Arbor for 23 years, uh, ran 
variety of things throughout the park system and was deputy city administrator before I left to, to run the Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board in Minneapolis and then uh, the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy in Pittsburgh. So excited to be back uh, in Washtenaw County in particular and working on this project. It's uh, very personal for me, so excited to be with you. Um, as Megan said, we're getting lots of engagement and feedback. Uh, park systems are really there to serve the residents of the jurisdiction. Um, and so making sure that we heard from all uh, variety of people, uh, different walks of life around the county and jurisdictions around the county is really important. So thanks for having us. Um, so we've got a series of questions. Megan and I are gonna take notes, but mostly we wanna hear from you. We don't wanna do the talking, we wanna hear from you. And so um, Marie, if I may ask, cause I wanna be really respectful of the time of this group, how much time uh, do we have to do this engagement with uh, the, the commission? I'd say you have until about 10 o'clock. Okay, sounds great. Cause I, I just wanna make sure we don't overuse our time. Um, <laughs> So I think first of all, what we'd love to do is hear your perspectives. And Marie, I'm not quite sure how to do this if you want people to raise hands or whatever, because we want, do want to hear from everyone. Uh, so the first question we have is, can you talk to us and tell us about your experience in Washtenaw County Parks, whether it's using the parks, participating in programs, engaging with staff, um, good, bad, or indifferent, we, we'd love to hear about your experience in the county park system. Let's start with raising hands and then I can call on you in the order that you appear. Um, and then I'll make sure if we're not hearing from somebody that we we call on them anyway, so they can share at some point during this discussion. So Sounds Brenda, great. I see your hand first. Yes, uh, Jane, what are your future plans for making the parks more handicap accessible for older adults? Do you have any plans for that? Um, Brenda, great question. Um, and it, it is an issue that one of the great things about the engagement we've been doing, we've been hearing that a lot, not just about older adults, but differently able people. And so it's come up often, particularly with the trails that are in preserves that are not paved, um, both uh, the condition of those trails, but also the, the material that's used for that surface. So it has come up multiple times. And so that, uh, I know Megan has personally gone to some of those places that we've heard about and is doing some things immediately. So I'll let her answer that from that perspective. But I expect uh, we're, we're still in the, in the stage of collecting lots of data, both this from these meetings, but also through surveys. The fact that it has come up frequently, Brenda, I would, I expect it is going to be one of our recommendations about accessibility into the parks, particularly on the trails. Megan, I don't know if you wanna talk about what, what you've been uh, trying to address immediately within the park system. Sure, so uh, agreed, we, we have heard it a couple of different times in a variety of different ways. So um, Washtenaw County Parks has a, a number of paved trails that are considered more fully accessible, right? Like the border to border trail, some of our other connecting communities trails, some of the trails within our larger park systems like County Farm Park or Rolling Hills. Um, but our nature preserves tend to be unimproved or slightly improved nature sur natural surface trails. Um, however, we are aware, and especially through this public engagement process of a few of those properties that are particularly challenging, whether or not it's the size of the gravel that we're using, or it's kind of an ankle twisting situation, or the fact that maybe people are going too long without an opportunity to sit down. So we're, we have to go through an evaluation process. It will take some time for us to do that, but we do appreciate hearing about ones that cause particular issue. So for example, I'll highlight two, two projects. Um, we have the Whitmore Lake Preserve. Um, that one is one that has kind of these series of um, kind of they're, they're there to stop flow um, of, for drainage along the path, but we've kind of created unnecessarily some trip hazards and we've used really large gravel. So we're looking to smooth those out a little bit and then backfill with some um, smaller gravel to try to make it a little bit easier to traverse along. Another property that we're looking at, and as we're doing renovation to existing parks, so um, Parker Mill, which is on Gettys Road, uh, mm -hmm. historic grist mill property, um, 
beautiful property connects to the border to border trail, but it is particularly challenging to get from the unpaved parking lot down into the park and to use the border to border trail. And so we are looking to try to straighten that out a little bit more, create a little more gentle slope to get into the park and then pave the parking lot. So just two okay. examples of some of the things we're looking at. Thanks, Megan. Thank you. Elizabeth. Hi, um, I I use the park system a lot. Um, I used to be um, a hiker and not and use mostly the nature preserves. Now, um, with some mobility issues, I tend to um, use the more improved pathways. Um, I would agree that. Uh, sometimes accessibility is an issue, and I think sometimes it can be helpful if, um, as people look at improvements, you incorporate a couple of uh, differently abled users to actually walk along, mm -hmm. because what looks like a little inconsequential barrier to some people might turn out to be a big barrier. Um, certainly in our climate and the climate change makes it more challenging, but ice and snow is a big issue about snow removal. Um, I know Rolling Hills often really tries hard to make a walking path accessible all winter long, and that's great, but that is something to be mindful of. Another thing I would suggest looking at is the link between uh, transportation and the actual parks, because a lot of parks, their uh, <clears throat> trailheads are not accessible unless you drive. Mm -hmm. There's not much interface with any kind of uh, public transportation. And I think as you're looking at a countywide plan, that also might be helpful um, because uh, if you can't get there, you can't use it. And as I'm really glad you're doing this reach out because as we talk frequently, the population in the county is aging. And one of the things we know is that um, movement is one of the keys to successful aging. So mm -hmm. the last thing I would like to say is things that you can help facilitate that get people out, um, walking groups, because sometimes people do not feel safe walking by themselves, but may mm -hmm. not have other folks who want to go with them. Walking groups, gentle exercise in the park, you know, all, you know, all those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Anything mm -hmm. you can do to... Uh, improve the number of those activities <clears throat> is welcome. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Margie? Yeah, thank you for, for being here. Um, as, as a younger adult, I use the park, uh, uh, Gallup Park, um, often. Um, and um, I... <clears throat> Um, particularly appreciated the possibility of of um, renting a, a covered place um, and being able to hold a, a meeting there. I think um, uh, we we did that with Girl Scouts and things like that. I I guess um, my and I so I speak so highly of the park system in Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County. Um, I'm I'm assuming that you include golf courses. Yes. Yeah. We do have one golf course. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so there is a lot of talk about uh, doing away with the golf courses in the city. And right. Yes. Um, you know, I I really think those golf courses are beautiful and many seniors play golf. 
And um, it's one of the things that they've done for a lifetime. And the city uh, courses, um, of course, there's the, the some there are different um, levels of skill with the two courses that you have. And a couple of years ago, you uh, we finally got carts at Huron Hills, which was a big boon for seniors because that's that back of that course is a little sporty and hilly um but i i think the courses are beautiful and i think they um meet the needs of a lot of seniors the 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 other thing i'd suggest um is that anytime you are thinking of renovating a park or making a new park or whatever you think intergenerational so that um you you think about I mean intergenerational is a big deal these days. We're all trying to be intergenerational. And so I I think you just need to put that on uh your agenda for every park and every change in parks so that you bring um different uh age levels together um, and help us uh accomplish that. Thanks, Margaret. Just mm -hmm. for clarification, the two courses, uh, Huron Hills and Leslie Park, those are city-owned courses, not mm -hmm. through the county, but um, very familiar. I used to run those golf courses, so very familiar, but they're, they won't be part of our plan. Um, yeah. I just wanted to provide that clarification. Um, so do you have, what courses do you have? The we have Pierce Lake, <clears throat> Pierce Lake Golf Course out in Chelsea. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh. And that one has definitely has carts because there's no yeah. way you can get through yes. that course without a cart. <laughs> yes. And and again, um, you know, I play that course and many, many times and it's a lot of seniors again. So I do appreciate your feedback and I think I can extrapolate a lot of the comments you made for our facility. Yeah. <clears throat> but we also have a really good working relationship with Ann Arbor Park. So we'll share. We've we've received some good. feedback too. So we'll go through that sharing process too. Good. Thank you. Yep. Bruce. Um first of all, I want to thank you for uh, coming before us. I think it's a really important topic and the timing is good. Um, and I want to echo a couple of the earlier comments. The intergenerational emphasis, I think, is um, extremely important. And there's a wide and wonderful world of design ideas out there. I'm not sure um, where you're looking, but I'd be happy to help on that. I've done a fair amount of work around the intergenerational area. Um, the question I have, a couple of questions I have are pretty basic. Um, What's the actual timeline and process for ongoing input? Because this is the, I just found out um, recently that the, you know, the new five-year plan is in play. Um, what's your timeline for receiving input? And in addition to these kind of sessions, how else might we be yeah. able to meet or talk with you? Yeah, great question. So we're actually at the tail end of the initial yeah. engagement. We've been doing engagement since actually November. Um, both through some public meetings, but very focused group uh, meetings like this and meeting with individual stakeholder organizations that the county works a lot with. Um, so, so those very intentional meetings we've been holding since, since um, November, and we have our last one actually on the 16th um, in Celine. But in addition to that, we've also had done what's called a statistically valid survey that's gone out uh, to across the county. That survey has also been closed uh, because we received uh, statistically valid results based on the demographics of the county. We're actually in the process of, we expect in the next couple of weeks to get a preliminary report from them on that survey. Another strategy, and I'm, I will put this in the chat, we have what's called a social pinpoint website that is particularly that is specifically fo focused on this project. And we actually have an online survey on that website that will be up through Memorial Day that you or others can actually just fill that survey out on your own. So I will make sure that I put that link in the chat so that 
both you can complete the survey and go to the, the website, but you also can share it with others uh, to encourage them to complete it. In addition to um, the survey on the Social Pinpoint website, Megan, maybe we take a minute just to put that uh, up on, our, on the screen so you can see it. There's also an interactive map for the entire county listing every single park and preserve in the county. And you actually can make very specific comments um, on that uh, interactive map. So Megan actually has a social pinpoint website up right now. Uh, you can see it. And so this is what I'll, I'll put, a, I'll put the link to the website here, but if you can see right here is the, where you can fill out the survey. If you just click there, Megan will do that. You can see the survey. So it takes you to a survey, a, a not too long survey, but you can complete that survey. Um, series of questions we have. So we're gonna, again, this survey will be up through Memorial Day. So you and others can complete that. And then um, if we go to this, the interactive map, Megan, we can show you the map and what it looks like. So you have to click uh, to open because it'll take you to a separate, uh, there we go, okay. So here's the map, you can enlarge the map, you can move the map around, you can move around the county. Maybe if you wanna show how to, there you go. And um, you can see where the uh, ideas are uh, in the bright green, there's some comments in blue, um, but you can actually make, add a marker. If you click on add a marker, you can actually put your, uh, put a particular address or location you want it to be, and then actually put a comment right there uh, with your marker if you like want to see a trail connection or there's a particular location where the trails are in bad shape or you want to see restrooms or benches. So um, you can actually put comments right there in the interactive map. In addition to that, the website, we keep this website up to date so that if we've got public meetings or other events or activities going on, we will keep this current. The intent is right, we are at a point in the process for the project where we're close to, I would suspect in the next month or two, we will have you know, six months worth of data that we've collected, not only public input and feedback and the survey results, but we're also analyzing every aspect of the park system, um, looking at do the inventory, doing some comparatives with other systems, that we will probably uh, in April or May uh, holding another series of public meeting and updating the Social Pinpoint website to share with everyone, here's what we've heard. This is the system as it is today, the conditions of the system. Here's the public feedback we've received. Here's the analysis of that. And maybe some preliminary recommendations that we'll be looking at making based on the, all of the data we've collected on the system. And so we'll be doing that again in April or May to share that again with the public, get your feedback before we actually do a preliminary report and recommendations. So I hope that answers your questions. And that's very helpful. And I appreciate that. Um, just one other follow-up question. Do we know, we collectively know um, what kind of resources we're looking at? Because it, ultimately it comes down to how those resources get allocated and I don't know how much in your thinking you've already approached the kind of equity question. Um, some areas are, um, and we're fortunate in the county to have, uh, uh, you know, a lot of wonderful assets, um, but matching that to the extent possible to populations that have greater need. Um, I don't know how much you're sort of factoring that in. Yeah, actually, Bruce, that is a, an excellent question and an excellent uh, point. It is actually a major focus of our work is ensuring not only, you know, an assessment of the conditions, but what are the needs in the system. And in fact, uh, much of the work that I have done the last 15 years has been <coughs> focused on equity, uh, particularly in Minneapolis, Pittsburgh. And I'm not, that's actually the focus of my consulting work is looking at not only the needs of the parks themselves, <coughs> But what are the community needs um, uh, based on historically underserved or underrepresented in, uh, groups and parts of the county? So that is a key piece of the work that we're doing is looking at what are the needs across the county uh, from a demographic perspective and how does that line up with the, uh, both parks 
facilities and programming that's offered. Um, in addition to that, one of the other key pieces of equity work is not just looking at the distribution of those resources, but it's also looking at uh, administrative policies and practices to ensure equitable access. Um, because inherently, um, not only do we um, need to look at you know, where investments have been made, but also are there policies and practices within any organization that we need to look at to make sure that those policies aren't inherently inequitable um, administratively as well. So we'll be doing those pieces as well from an equity standpoint. That's great. And then just one 10 second comment. Um, to the extent that you could reference this um, towards healthy and active aging, that could be very helpful to our to the commission. Um, we're trying increasingly to talk about, you know, how we can promote countywide healthy and more active aging. And that may be part of your language already, but if not, it would be really helpful to add some reference to that effect. All right. Sounds great. Thank you, Bruce. Very much appreciate it. And just a quick piggyback on that. When you refer to seniors or older adults, we prefer saying older adults as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Phyllis, you're up next. So um, I uh, have a passion also for intergenerational projects and activities. So I was glad to hear comments about that. Um, I, uh, I find that um, I mainly uh, like to walk at Gallup Park. And every time I go, whether it's once a week or once a month, it I feel like I'm on vacation and say to myself, why don't I come every day? Um, and then it rains and there's a portion that uh, gets very muddy. And so I don't know if that comes into what you're working on, but um, sometimes the the trails need to be uh, 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 attended with extra mulch or whatever it is that's done. Um, so I just thought I would make that comment, but uh, we're very lucky to have so many wonderful parks here. Thanks very much, Phyllis. Jennifer? Hi, I just, I sort of wanted to answer the first question that you, you brought up about um, you know, our experience with the, the park system. And, um, you know, when my children were small and they're all grown now, I spent a lot of time in the park system for summer programs. It was invaluable, um, you know, skating, swimming, um, Girl Scouts, all of that. Um, but when I started to become a caregiver for my older uh, father, I found that I had to choose between activities for my children or activities that he could participate in. So I, I want to echo those sentiments about the intergenerational uh, opportunities. And also, you know, in terms of healthy aging, um, I think we also need to start making that a focus for maybe middle-aged folks that aren't older adults yet so that we can <laughs> start our healthy aging early and become, you know, healthier older adults as well. So that's just my, my thought on that. Good point. Yeah, thank you. Brenda? Yeah, um, Megan and Jane, I was thinking what I think would really help too, and you might want to consider this, is working with more senior uh, centers, senior groups, and plan outdoor activities. The county parks can plan outdoor activities for these senior groups. That's a way that you can get some of our seniors to the parks uh, especially here on the eastern part of the county, we have seniors who have never had the opportunities to visit the parks uh, due to certain situations. And I think if you guys plan uh, activities throughout the county with senior groups, you would get more seniors to participate in our county parks. Um, it's something you might want to think about. And I don't think that's anything we're doing now, Megan. Is there? We're not working with any. No, seniors. with the exception, 
with not exactly um i would say with the exception of um, our our nature programs where it's open to the whole public <clears throat> um but not targeted so i think that's more oh. what you're mentioning oh. yes. um, i would say an outcome of these meetings that we've been having is we're we're building these connections and so i know next week i've got a meeting with the um, Ypsilanti District Library, their senior group that they meet. We, we went and spoke to them a couple of weeks ago. We're looking for different ways to try to create, like they were talking about puzzles and parks and things like that. And so we have mm -hmm. space to go. They have great ideas. And so we're trying to come up with some intersection pieces. So um, keep the ideas coming because I think that that's a great outcome of these conversations. I think that would be a great idea. And that would be a way that we can get more of our seniors to uh, enjoy the county parks with different type of activities, so. Agreed. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'd also like to encourage you to sometimes think small, not big. Um, I am a, a heavy user of the nature preserves. I think I've been to everyone in, in the county and with my hiking poles, I can manage to, albeit slowly, get most places, but there, you don't always have to think of having a paved path or a super improved surface. Sometimes having a place to sit, even on a um, otherwise non-improved trail can be a tremendous benefit. And the other things is access to restroom facilities. They don't need to be fancy. Porta potties are just fine. But um, the reality is, is unimproved often means totally unimproved. And some people may be uncomfortable with approaching things in the scouting manner <laughs> of <laughs> find a bush tree or shrub. Uh, <laughs> But sometimes very small things like that can all of a sudden make something use, usable that wasn't very easily used before. The other thing I would encourage you to do, I mean, that's an amazing way of gathering data online. However, in terms of publicity efforts, we tend to forget that Many people do not use online uh, access as a way they gather information about either activities or locations. Um, I think it's easy to forget print media, especially for seniors, but I have seen in senior centers and other places where older adults frequent getting much more traction of publicity on paper publicity and things people can take with them or take with them to the park. Um, mapping is another issue of trails and that can be a key issue. Again, I understand the reliance on online mapping because uh, it's a lot easier and inexpensive but that too can be a barrier for people who um, aren't comfortable using mapping apps. So I would just encourage you, don't forget the low tech ways of sharing information as you look at your next five-year plan. Great point. Margie? Yeah, just a quick thought, um, you know, Marie, you mentioned using the terms, uh, the term older adults instead of seniors. And I, I tend to think that language is pretty important as we try to message things about older adults. And I believe, Marie, if this is still true, the Ann Arbor Community Foundation is using the term healthy and fulfilling aging. Is mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it has kind of a, a meaning to it that we try to get across um, healthy and fulfilling aging. So if you believe in language making a difference that you might want to tend to that. Um, the other thing that uh, I think is important for 
seniors is having everyone abide by the rules of the road. And I don't know how you get that out there, but <laughs> I've been I've been walking and some bicycle comes up behind me and yells behind you and it just scares the peewadden out of me instead of um helping me um to step aside. So I, you know, I just think there are some polite things that people need to know. And I don't know how you get that out to folks, uh, but it it really I think would be a benefit to many of us who are walk taking a walk as older adults. Thank you. I appreciate that comment. And we work with a lot of uh, non-motorized trail groups. So a lot of these trail groups are across the state. And it is a common conversation about just trail etiquette and how to kind of talk about the multi-users. So um, we haven't cracked that nut yet, but I, I agree with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's something we need to look at. Okay. Jasmine? We you're really quiet. A try it one more time. Yeah, try one more time. Feel quiet. Oh, um, oh, there we go. That's great. <laughs> okay. Um, first, yeah, thank you for coming uh, to this meeting. So I want to echo what Brenda was saying about um, just events for older adults. And so I did look at um, the special events that you guys list for like throughout the year. And I noticed that there are a lot of great events, but none are targeted towards older adults. And so I think that could be a good way to like, engage um, the older community. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Jefferson? This is great. I, I think the park system is a great way to get people of um, older out and about and to think about healthy aging. And I think I would like to say, I think the county has done a great job in at least in the last 10, five to 10 years of providing um, better equity for park systems in eastern part of Washtenaw County. Um, it used to feel like we didn't have a lot of resources and especially because Hidden Lake, or not Hidden Lake, uh, Rolling Hills did get a lot of great updates, which I think really helped for getting more people on the east side of the county out and about um, into the park. So I want to say congrats on that. The staff there are amazing. I go there all the time. And I have noticed there are, um, it is intergenerational. You see people of all ages there. And I think that could be a great focus of starting a project there because, you know, the trails are, are there's already trails um, for different mobility levels there. Um, so that could be a great place to, especially where Elizabeth's talking about, to start small. And a thing that made me think about, I've traveled to Germany a lot, and a friend of mine who works over there, she is an occupational therapist, and they do a lot of programming. So like in the cold weather months, they'll have programming inside the senior centers or the community center. And then as they get to the spring, they move those same programs, like art at the senior centers, in the senior center, and then in the spring, they have it out in the parks or out in uh, the green space area. So I think that's a cool concept of getting people to experience both the senior centers and experiencing the community parks. And one uh, interesting thing that they've done um, out there is they've had walks where the oat, like an occupational therapist or a physical therapist will go on a walk with um, folks who have challenge with mobility so that there's there, someone there for safety reasons. So it might be a great way for in the beginning when you're trying to get new people to come out and see if this preserve is the right place for them to see if maybe they could use poles and uh, try the uneven terrain and they would feel more confident if they had a PT mm -hmm. or an OT maybe there with them. So just That's a few a great things, idea. I, I think that could really help and start small and then pick up a lot of the other parks. That's Thank a great idea. For that, really. Yeah, that feedback. Really. We have uh, just started a Nordic walking program within the last year or so. And that's based out of kind of a little bit of the concept you were talking about where it's in the Mary Lou Murray Recreation Center and then it's out in County Farm Park, which is adjacent to uh, Mary Lou Murray. So that's been pretty popular. It can be a little robust because that, that park has some terrain there um, versus some of the other more flat property. But I really like where you were going with maybe that's a way to get people out and comfortable with some of the spaces. And so, so mm -hmm. thank you for that idea. Yeah, great. Annie? Thanks. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Um, 
Yeah, I just, uh, I appreciate a lot of the feedback that folks have already given um, and echo like the transportation um, accessibility needs. I also want to highlight, so I live right um, across the street from Frog Island Park in the city of Ypsilanti, and I know that's part of the, the system, and um, we're hoping to get more of a footprint on the east side of the county um, with the whole system. Um, the part of the parking is being addressed with some upgrades that have been made possible through the Parks and Rec um, Commission, as well as the DNR grant that the city just got. Um, but it's only part of it. And the reason why I flag it, um, Janice, who used to serve on the Parks and Rec Commission that lives in the city of Ipsy, uh, she often complains about the Frog Island parking lot. And it's a it's a difficult um, one, but I always think about the fact that if somebody were in uh, maybe a wheelchair or had crutches, they wouldn't actually be able to navigate that parking lot to get to part of the trail um safely and so uh it's something that i've been working on i'm just flagging like parking lots are not the best that, like the most fun things to invest in but people being able to safely walk from their cars whether they're you know able to walk or in a wheelchair i think is super important um in addition to other things like making sure parking lots are lit and things like that um especially in the months that we uh get dark earlier in michigan thank you Thanks. Great. Thank you very much. Deanna. Hi, it's Dina. Dina, sorry. <laughs> I know you have a friend or somebody that's Deanna, right? I, yeah, my project manager at MDOT. It, yeah, and it <laughs> no spells worries. the same. And so I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. I just wanted to piggyback a little bit on something that Margie said. Um, I I. I think one of the themes I'm hearing a lot about here today is like multi-generational use. And I think that's so important. Um, you know, I, <clears throat> I still have younger kids. And so we ride bikes on trails and path pathways. Um, and I also find it like challenging how to navigate that with walkers. And if there is a way to consider um, trails that have like designated lanes, for you know, walking and for biking, I think that's a really great way of addressing the multi generational um, use, um, especially on any pathways that may run outside of parks, but maybe along um, roads. You know, like my kids don't want to ride in the road, which of course, as you would imagine, you don't want them to either. So again, you know, we like to ride bikes, and so we need to be able to ride bikes on those paved pathways, but completely recognize the need to respect the the road for walkers and runners as well yeah great suggestion yeah thank you jennifer good morning and good morning the uh, people uh you guys joining us today well i lived in ann arbor for uh, 40 plus years and then moved to and loved Gallup Park. It's my favorite place in the world, actually. But uh, and then moved to Ipsy about 10 years ago. And so I would drive past North Bay Park, but I never would go in because I just didn't. It seemed like the parking was outside of the park and you would have to walk in a, a distance to get to the park. And so finally, after a few years, it's like, let me just go and see what it's about. And I really love the park. But I just think from the street value, from the street view, it doesn't look that inviting as a park to go into. And so that's just um, my two cents on that. Is that the one in Ipsy Township, Jennifer? No, it's on Whitaker Road. I don't know if it's right. Ipsy Town. Okay. Yes, Ipsy Township. And you have to walk down the hill to get to it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, it, you make a really good point, Jennifer. In fact, uh, when we do surveys, uh, people's visual uh, impression of a park and space is, that often starts with park. 68% of users find that that perception people have makes big decisions whether they go in and use the park or not. So your point mm -hmm. is very, very well taken. Yes, we appreciate that. <laughs> Elizabeth? Um, Annie's comments about Frog Island just brought up another little thing. You know, there's that wonderful track, the walking track that a lot of people don't know about. And it's all the frustration that there's no um, 
mileage indicators. And a lot of us want to know, like, I walked so many meters or a quarter of a mile and so on. And we're mm -hmm. trying to use our fitness app or whatever. And that's another small thing on paths. I mean, I know large when you think about all the trails there are, but some sort of way to consistently indicate like this loop is a mile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's this far there and back mm -hmm. and so on. Um, not only is it useful information, I think it um, is sort of welcoming because just as you said, Jane, you know, when people have their first impression of the park, they see it first and they know what's in there. As you go in and you go on the trails and you see additional informational signage, you kind of go, oh, I'm mm -hmm. supposed to be here. So I honestly think it, it gives a little um, welcome to people, mm -hmm. all those little things. Um, and uh, so I would make that suggestion too. Any easy way you can give just a little more information kind of says, yeah, we want you here. You're supposed to be here. Thank you. Annie? Thank you. Um, two things that reminded me, um, I spend a lot of time um, on that dirt track because it's basically the same size as a regular track. Um, it's a little off though. When you do four laps, you end up a little bit um, earlier than where you start in the, the first lap. Um, sometimes, and I know this is a, you know, a city park, but um, that dirt track, uh, in the future, I'd love it to be more of a shared space between the city and the county. The dirt track is often uneven. Um, and sometimes people take like bikes with like, um, I think thicker tubes, and then it creates like different curves. And I think that could be a safety concern if somebody's not paying attention. And then um, thinking of, I spent a lot of time in the summer at County Farm Park, and um, I think for just like accessibility reasons and just, you know, with the technology that we have now, it'd be nice if there were ways, you know, like if something, if somebody gets hurt out there and they're by themselves, um, like, uh, I, I don't know, I'm just not, like, there's not really, like, there's not like a, a hub, like, ever so often where you could like press a button because you need power, and I don't know and, um, if that's something that you've looked at that other places in Michigan or states have done, but um, that kind of seems like something that might be um, helpful, not just for older adults, but anybody who might have an emergency or have some sort of get injured. Oh, thank you. <clears throat> um, no, I think specifically with County Farm Park, we did a mapping project about 10 or 12 years ago um it's a it's a big property with a lot of different trails as you know sounds like you walk there quite a bit um so you, people can get lost and so one of the things we at least try to do and it does rely on cell phone use so it's that's not a hundred percent of a great way to do it but with the trail stations there's markers and so if you call and say i'm down or the last one I saw is number nine or number 12 or whatever that might be. That is kind of our wayfinding system, but that's only as good as if you, if you know about that type of wayfinding system. So fair comment. Thank you. Taylor. So just, I, I don't live in Washtenaw, but just from my own, from where I do live for our county, our parks, something that I am also attempting to work on um, is something that can also be available for those of different needs. I have an 11 year old who's not, who doesn't like to be active, but I like to bike, but my husband is also chronically disabled. So yeah. it's hard for us to do activities together. So even just having or including things, um, if I wanted to bike a longer track, but she could be at a park and he'd have a place to sit, like those types of things where we're still together, but doing our own passions is, uh, I think, very beneficial, especially when we're talking about intergenerational and accessibility for all. Good point. Just want to, um, I'm conscious of time, so I, I want to be respectful of that, but I really appreciate, I think Megan and I both appreciate uh, the feedback, suggestions, questions you've asked it's mm -hmm. i've taken a ton of notes it's really helpful Same. <laughs> um but i also want to just give one last opportunity if there's anything you think um would be helpful for us to know um 
before we wrap up in the next few minutes, that would be helpful. Um, again, really, really appreciative of all the feedback we've received, suggestions, experiences, really, really helpful. And the specificity has been great actually too. So thank you. I'd also add right. a couple of comments around events or things like that um, for um, our older adult population. If you have suggestions or ideas about those events or what would maybe pique your interest, that would be also great to hear. And I just realized that I did not put the Social Pinpoint website in the chat. So let me we do that right now. Chat, actually, we don't have Oh, you don't have a chat. Which is okay. why you couldn't have done it anyway. <laughs> okay. Um, I grabbed the the website link when Megan was sharing her screen. Okay. And we'll send it out to everybody. Perfect. Thanks, mm -hmm. Marie. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Are there resources coming from the state and or the federal level that make their way to Washington? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Particularly ARC funding. Uh, there's a lot of trails. In fact, one of the reasons we're, you know, it's a good practice for park agencies to do master plans anyway. But one of the reasons that uh, the, the county does a five-year master plan is it's required by the state. The state has what's called SCORP, which is a state um, master planning around parks and recreation. And in order for agencies to even fundamentally qualify to request funding through the state, they have to have a five-year master plan. And the state manages uh, not only funds that come through the state of Michigan, but they also manage many of the federal dollars that come through the state down into local and county agencies. So, um, so yeah, there's, and, and, you know, particularly with ARC funding that came through post COVID, some additional resources. There's a great focus on non-motorized uh, transportation. So, you know, incredible funding that is in the history. I've been, I've been doing this work for a really long time. Um, and I would say that the funding that's been coming through at the federal level in the last four or five years is more significant than I've seen in my entire career. So um, lots of resources for environmental, uh, efforts for non-motorized transportation and perks fits well into all of those pieces. We have been very lucky to receive a number of grants. And as Jane mentioned, more more recently than non-motorized trail grants have been really successful for us. So um, thank you to the support of members in our community. We have our millage dollars matched. So it's a third um, millage funding, a third grants, and a third private donations that go and help do most of our border-to-border -border trail projects. Well, not seeing any more questions or hands raised to just, again, Marie, thank you for giving us the time today. And uh, thank you to the rest of you for what you do to advance efforts in the county around uh, active adults and, and aging uh, individuals in the county. And, and again, thank you for the feedback you've given us. It's been really rich and valuable. So I really appreciate it. Thank you so I really much. really appreciate your time. <laughs> thank you, Marie. Have a, have a good rest of the day, you guys. See you, you next too. week, Megan. See you next week. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs> right, Bye. Bye. Um, the next item on our agenda is subcommittee updates. And <laughs> I'll go out of order. I would like to start with town hall today. So if the town hall subcommittee would like to share any updates they have, that would be great. Yes, I, I would. Jennifer and I, we have completed our flyer. It has gone out into the community. We have gotten some good feedback. And now um, what we're working on now and have been working on are people to sponsor and present uh, information to at our event. So things are going well. So and if any board members have any suggestions as far as who would, they would like to see, a 10, we welcome that. And you had a mock flyer or like a, is it a mock flyer or is it the actual flyer? That's it's that. the actual flyer. Great, great. Um, If you all didn't see it in your emails, we'll send it as a follow-up along with the, the link from Parks and Rec. Uh, Phyllis, Thank I you. see your hand up. Yeah, I had a question and I saw the flyer, which, which looked 
really good. Um, I was a little confused in terms of the topic to be covered. Is it going to be a safe focused on safety like the one last year? Pretty um, much, yes. Thinking that we'll get a different audience this year. Exactly. And a lot of things have come up since our last meeting. Uh, sexual assaults uh, with older adults and hopefully we can have someone there to talk about ways that we can protect ourselves from those kind of issues, those kind of things. So basically, yes, to your question. Do you think that in the publicity or, <clears throat> or when we forward the, um, the flyers to uh, our networks, we might have some, uh, <clears throat> a list of, of what topics might be covered. Um, like last year, the issue of scams were uh, really significant. And I think we all learned how prevalent uh, these mm -hmm. uh, efforts are. Um, and so sexual assault and, and things like that, I think it would be helpful to know what, so maybe once you get your presenters in place, you'll right. be able to give us a list. That's what we were, that's what we were planning on doing, Phyllis. <clears throat> that's exactly what we were planning to do. Right. Okay. Any other questions, comments for the town hall subcommittee? Great, we'll move on to communications. Any updates from the communications subcommittee? No, great. Um, let's do moving forward future planning subcommittee next. I was not able to attend that meeting. So if someone would like to share what you guys talked about, that would be great. Um, I was nominated to share because we did both moving forward and we did a combined um, millage, senior millage subcommittee meeting. Um, and so I can report a little bit on that combined meeting and also wanted to end with the uh, um, sort of recommendation that we might merge, um, end up merging those two committees um, going forward on a more permanent basis. But um, so we touched on a number of things having to do with beginning with the millage um, and then kind of moved along into looking ahead, um, both in terms of forward looking beyond the calendar year, but also sort of thinking about what our agenda and, and focus would be between now and the end of 2024. Um, I'll just take, I offer a few thoughts that people, um, and share a few thoughts that people offered. Um, Margie was talking about the pros and cons of stories when we talk about the work, not just data, that it was important that we be able to talk about what we're doing, um, not only in numbers, but in also in terms of some the value in terms of explaining what we're focusing on, whether it be around the millage or anything in terms of stories. Um, Allison and Jasmine brought up a really helpful point about needing to try to work more closely across generations as we talk about some of these issues, that there's people who are younger people who are willing and interested in being part of these conversations with us around um, the importance of support and resources for people as they age. But um, I think the value of having a multi-generational advocacy uh, was a, a good point. Um, Phyllis talked about one, a point she raised was um, also sort of on this point, the, the potential for future generations to benefit um, as well. Um, communities and future generations can benefit from some of the work that we're talking about now, especially uh, to the extent that we can, you know, have stronger investments in some of this. Um, the one thing that we kind of came to, as I mentioned at the end, there were some other comments, but what, what we came around to thinking was any work to um, 
move ahead, whether it starts with the more immediate focus on the on the senior millage, um, and there may be some folks who could re give a little update there. I understand that the um, the board of commissioners are going to be taking a more detailed look at that on the 17th of April. Um, but there's a lot of folks who are trying to reach commissioners and the need to educate commissioners on a pretty regular basis came up. Um, and then I think also the last thing I'll end with was the idea that we thought about combining the two was in order to have more of a, a future looking, a forward looking um, focus to, to the, to our work, we need to have um, a roadmap. And we think we, you know, I, I sent out a document to folks. I don't know if they had a chance to look at it, but there's a lot of really wonderful information and things to build on. And I think we need to be able to talk about the importance of the millage as a cornerstone for getting things moving, having some dedicated resources. But we need to locate that in the idea of a broader set of ideas and strategies and structures that will really result in an aging focus for the county that we really feel proud about. Um, not not settle for something that would be just sort of a minimum, but really try to push the thinking of leaders and community to know what kind of um, what kind of community what kind of county we want that allows people to grow up and grow old in the best way. So those are some of the things we talked about. I don't know if anybody else wants to add anything. I have a question, uh, Bruce, for you. On the 17th, is that meeting, are they going to discuss the millage? Are they going to... I want to commissioners. Pause, are they going to pause that question, Brenda? Um, I'm I'm hoping Annie will answer more of that when we get to her next. Um, okay. We don't have. Uh, I don't know if the subcommittee had a lot more additional information, but Annie will have a lot more. So we're going to save that. Okay. For okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Well, then we'll turn it over to you, Annie. Um, just one thing, Sue, if we wanted to formally merge those two committees, what would it take to do that? We just do it. That's what we okay. did last year. Well, we just met. Don't we have to worry about how many people are on that committee? Um, yeah. Yes, but most of them are already in in both. So we can we can take a look at it. Um, they met last time and it was it was fine so i'm not mm -hmm. terribly concerned about it all right. Cool. all right well um my update uh we had a great presentation from marie um since our last meeting um i have been having conversations with um folks from say as seniors i went to their meeting um last so last week i think it was last week um, and then I recently um, connected with Commissioner Maciejewski to kind of come up with our strategy for the working session on the 17th. Um, so we are going to have some proposed, um, a proposed like structure of the millage to share with our colleagues and, and start the conversation there. Um, in the beginning of the meeting, obviously sure. there's time for public participation. Um, I don't want to like deter anybody from speaking um, for the one minute that you get, but I will say everybody who speaks, that will be taking away time that we could be talking about the millage as a board because we only get an hour and a half. Um, so if, you know, instead of having every single person from the Commission on Aging speak, maybe just like two or three um, and maybe split up what you want to say since you only get a minute. Um, I kind of encourage say as seniors the same. Say yes to seniors will have five minutes at the beginning of our meeting to give a little um presentation to help set the tone of the meeting. Um, and so we'll have uh, folks that are involved, that have been very involved in the millage conversations for a number of years, that they'll have five minutes at the beginning to kind of um, lay out uh, some of the, the tone of the meeting. So um, hopefully it'll be a good meeting. Commissioner Machieski and I feel like we uh, have a solid foundation um, on where we want to keep the conversation. Um, that aligns with the recommendations that came out of this group and with what say yes to seniors want. So um, I invite you all to attend in person or online, um, but I encourage you, you know, if, if you haven't or if you have already to follow up with your 
counterpart on the board of commissioners to just, um, I guess, explain even further than you already have on what the importance um, of a millage would be. Elizabeth? Um, I think that um, being present at the working sessions and at the um, meeting is important. Um, I certainly think Marie did a great job presenting our annual report. I talked my head off during the <laughs> minutes. I I got so impassioned that I had to be stopped. I went over time. But I think it's important that it's not always the same faces who show up. And I would encourage everybody uh, on the commission, if they can, on the 17th, pick it. You know, every working session, every board meeting, you can not just submit written comments, but I think having your face there, whether it's via Zoom or in person, is helpful because um, I think sometimes if just the same couple of people are seen, it gives the impression that they're just a couple of people who are really passionate about this issue, but it's not a larger group of people. Mm -hmm. I would also encourage you, we all have connections in our county of people who aren't in the commission, who aren't with Say Yes to Seniors, who are also interested in this issue. And if you can encourage them to reach out to their county commissioner and just send an email or here's old fashioned, write a letter or something so that we can sh show that it's not just a small group of people or just the service providers who see the need, um, but that there are many people in the county who see the need. What time is that meeting, Elizabeth, on the 17th? The working session is 5.30, isn't it, Annie? Um, yes, working session is always at 5.30, and then our regular board meeting is at 7 o'clock, and, and that's where people have three minutes to speak. So um, if everyone could speak, you know, at that one, and it'll be after our discussion as well, so you can get feedback on the discussion plan. Um, I had a question. That's my update. Oh, yeah. Um, yep. are there are there any sticking points that we could help address yeah. with commissioners? Not to like name them in, but just any sticking points. I think um well you were at the you were there at the, the working session when you gave the presentation. So um I would encourage people to watch that and um the comments and then also the board meeting where we talked about the senior village. Um, I think that Jason Machieski and I both understand where the gifts are and how a millage would help expand services and help more people. But I think, um, you know, some commissioners might not be all the way, are not all the way there. Um, yeah. so I think just the, the plan for me with who I've selected to give like a five minute, um, uh, give five minutes to speak to set the table um it, it it's a combination of folks that work at say seniors i've reached out to chris lemon because he's been doing the mapping to try to outline um the strengths of the system currently and how um, knowledge will help even further so um you know i it's hard to say um i'm i'm one of the newest members on the party commissioners so other folks have been around for these conversations a lot longer than me and i don't i'm not inside of their head so i don't really know right yeah, thank you. Margie? Yeah, um, you know, I, uh, um, at the at the meeting, Bruce presented what we talked about at the, the meeting um, uh, related to the future. Um, you know, I think we have, um, as a commission, presented the board with data and data and data and data. And having done that for my whole career, <laughs> I know that there comes a point in time when data doesn't 
it falls on deaf ears. And so, well, some, some is useful. I think that's where our group got to talking about stories and putting people, um, um, having people relate to actual experiences and what, um, what many of us have gone through trying to find resources for our older adults that we're caring for. So I, and, and, and I think also a point um, Bruce brought up was you too will be in this situation. It, it's coming for you too. And so, you know, I think, I think it's those kinds of uh, stories and, and information that might get us further um, with the board of commissioners, but it's, it's a, an overwhelming uh, burden for people. Um, so I'd go low on the data and high on the emotional stories that we all know exist. Mm -hmm. So just want to say that. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, thanks for clarifying that. Um, but I and I also wanted to sort of build on that on a point that I forgot to mention that Allison brought up, which I think is a good follow up, was that um, we need to have um, more present more solutions rather than complaints, um, and I think that that's something we can do. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Um, moving on to the report from the chair, um, I did do that presentation for the Board of Commissioners. You can watch it online. Um, thanks, Elizabeth and Annie, for saying I did a good job. I feel like I didn't deliver what I what I personally hope to deliver, especially when it came to the questions and answers. Um, but feel free, everyone, to watch it. I think that the questions, some of them, some of the commissioners did ask um, can be helpful to know, especially if they're your commissioner, how you can approach conversations with them individually, opposed to just at these um, public comments. Um, um, a, so date reminder, we've already said it a few times, but April 17th, the working session is when um, they're going to talk about the senior millage in a lot more detail. It's at 530. I think Annie's advice on um, limiting how many people choose to share before the working session and save it for the three minutes afterwards. I think if you're saving your comments for the, the three minutes at the full board session, you can address some of the, the sticking points that you may hear during that discussion. Um, and that could be more advantageous than saying something up front. Um, so I think that's, that's wise. Um, a couple of other dates that I wanted to share with you all. Um, May 1st is Older Michiganians Day. Um, and there was an image uh, from Ageways in one of the recent emails. When we send out the follow-up after this, uh, we'll include that again. Um, there was also a notice about SEMCOG having three meetings specifically on senior issues. SEMCOG is Southeastern Michigan Council of Governments. Um, they talked about, I don't remember what the last aging issue was, the first one that they talked about. I didn't get to make it to that session. Their next one is April 18th on seniors and housing. And then their third one is seniors and transportation on May 23. Um, and so we'll resend that flyer out to you as well in our follow-up. Are those meetings in Southfield, Marie? Probably. Yeah. The address is, I think, on the on the flyer, or you'll see it when you register. Um, I was hoping the first one would be online so I could attend, and it, it was not. Um, Bruce, I see your hand up. Was that still from before? That was from before. Okay, great. Phyllis, I saw your hand go up. Um, would you include the link to your presentation to the uh, Board of Commissioners? Sure. I, I tried to find it and, and couldn't, but it's probably easier, uh, you know. Yeah. yeah, I can include that. 
out <laughs> what to look for. Yeah. Um, the last piece that I had um, is really a question probably for Ashley. Um, Ashley, are you available? I am. Yay. Okay. So um, we are an advisory body for the county. Um, there has been some emails that are being sent within the Commission on Aging in our email, in our, in our threads. And I want to know, is that okay that that's been happening or we need to follow Open Meetings Act and not reply all when we reply to emails? That is a great question. No, and no, I'm, I can answer it. I'll, oh, I was going to say, yep, I can, but please go ahead. You cannot reply all. Okay. You should never reply all. Yeah. Great. That is That's a violation. I and I just yep. wanted to, to make sure. Um, so I've asked Taylor to move our emails to BCC. That way, if your email is like mine and we default to reply all, we don't break that open meetings act. Um, just reply to Taylor or just reply to myself and we'll make sure that that communication comes from Taylor to the group. That way we're not breaking open meetings act. Are there any, okay, questions? Good, Elizabeth. Um, I know I fall into the category of the lazy person who uh, doesn't have a separate list of everybody's email. So, um, and tend to um, use a reply all list or the CC list. So could we again, Taylor, perhaps just send individually to us commissioners a list of our emails. So we each, everybody has the individual email of everybody. So we don't fall into my lazy habit. Yeah, we can put that together. Great. Any other questions about that? Super. Moving on to new business. Um, we talked a few meetings ago about various presentations, things we wanted to learn, um, conversations we wanted to have or host in the Commission on Aging. Um, those are listed at the bottom of our agenda in that footer area. Um, and for the sake of time and cleanliness of the conversation, what I would like to do is send out a survey to you guys so we can have a good idea on how these uh, presentations can be ordered throughout the year. Um, and then the, the officers will schedule those appropriately. Um, if something pertinent comes up, we might scooch around the, the schedule, but um, that would be helpful. So what I'll do is I'll send out a survey or have Taylor send out the survey um, in a follow-up email with you guys. And what we'll have you do is rank when you would, which one do you want to hear about first, um, second and third, and that will help us yeah. just decide on the cadence of the rest of the year. Um, any questions, any presentation, any other things you want to hear about, learn about, in addition to what we have now, what we have now is end of life planning, the ARPA agencies, housing, transportation, care coordination, caregivers, aging in place, and emergency response protocols as it relates to older adults. Right. I guess the, the question I have is when we tackle all these issues into separate from one another, we're sort of left without what I keep referring to as a real framework for our, for sort of helping our, our work move forward. Um, and I think it's important that we've, we don't lose sight of any of these issues, but I also think it's important that we have um, a way of thinking about them and eventually, you know, prioritizing them, but, but putting them into some kind of um, strategic plan for how to look at, you know, aging in Washtenaw County. I don't think we have that. Um, yeah. You know. I'll say for the strategic plan piece that that's 
that's, I mean, what the Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation has hired consultants to, to help with. Um, what's been recommended by Jason Maciejewski, our previous liaison, as well as Annie, is as we learn about these things, we need to be passing up our what we learn to the board of commissioners, whether that's, you know, a memo, a recommendation, but mm -hmm. ideally it's individual conversations with our um our our counterpart, our the district that we represent, that board of commissioner. Um, if we can be educating them on aging issues, if we can be sharing with them, you know, as far as housing goes, this is what we learned. This is how we would like to see some things improve. That's that's really our our role here um, is to to be that advisor in that way. Um, we have not been tasked with making a strategic plan. We've been asked to participate in in some of those efforts, but it's not our role to make that strategic plan. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Well, yes and no. Um, let me just push this one step further. Um, sure. It's it seems like I know the I know that the work we'll get from the community foundation will be helpful. It's going to have recommendations. It's not going to have resources necessarily attached to it. Although, obviously, the center, the community foundation, has the potential to put some resources, further resources behind it. And when you say resources, you're talking about finances, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. But it seems like our ability to have what you, you know, I mean, I understand we have an advisory role to the commission, mm -hmm. um, but it seems like our ability to really talk with the commission is extremely limited. You know, it's, it's in really small sound bites. It's in, um, you know, very sporadic, perhaps monthly conversations. There's some side conversations. There really isn't a true conversation going on. And I think it was evident to me when I watched the nature of the conversation that took place at the last couple of commission meetings where they're, um, they're really coming at it from so many different perspectives. Um, and I, so I think my question is really, how can we be more helpful and how can we be more actively engaged in really talking about these things with them so it's not just sending up some information or having these three-minute presentations, you know, some of which are very, very good and some of which are very, very powerful, but it just seems like a very inefficient way to do serious work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who is your board of commissioner? Robbie. <laughs> Okay, well, that that's part of it. <laughs> um, so I would encourage you, even though it is very difficult to um, have those conversations with your board of commissioner, I would still encourage you to um, do whatever you can. Try to show, I don't know if he has office hours that you could show up at and catch his ear. If you could get to, um, I don't know if he gets to some of the meetings early or later, send an email, leave a voicemail. Um, I saw Ashley's hand go up and she probably has a better way of trying to get that conversation. But I really would push the relational piece. That's that's how we're going to keep moving this stuff forward if we are building that relationship. And that's on us just as much as them. Mm -hmm. Ashley, if you could share and then Elizabeth. Yes. Uh, thank you, Marie. Uh, Bruce, please shoot me an email. Um, my email is hall, H-A-L-L-A. -L -L -A at washtenaw.org. I have all seven of Commissioner Robbie's calendars and I can help you find a time to meet with him if that's something you're interested in. Um, I'll do that, but that's not my point. <laughs> oh, no, I know. I'm just letting you know I can. And for any of you, actually, I can be helpful with connecting you to your commissioner, either a phone call or a meeting. Um, that's literally my job. So happy to be helpful in that way. No, I did. I did. I did talk with him. I did you know, send stuff, stuff to him. I just, and I'm not putting it on him. He's very interested in sort of learning and, and listening, but I just think it's, this is just a very inefficient way to do our work. And this is a serious topic. This is a topic that we, we all talk about how important it is, not just for our generation, one generation, but for all generations, it takes serious work. It takes serious resources. I've said, several times that a lot of really good work has already been 
be, has begun and been done. And I think it, to do this in such a piecemeal way, and it, it just doesn't move us in a way that is, I think, serious. And I tried to point out a little bit in that thing I sent to people, there are some models out there, some from other counties, some from other places like states, California, for example, that just puts the work that we're trying to do in a much more thoughtful and progressive framework. And I just don't know how, without some kind of different way of working on these things, um, we're ever going to get to a place where the county is truly a leader in aging. We're a leader in so many other things, but we're not a leader in aging. Elizabeth? I think that I agree with you, Bruce, that just presentations to the Board of Commissioners and public comment will not move things forward alone. But my experience is that it is the one-on-one -on -one relationship that you can build with an elective official that will help them see the information. It is, we've given a lots of information. And as Margaret said, there's a point at which, and this is not to put down the commissioners, think of all the information we give, think of all the information that's given about county roads, think of all the information that's given about drains, about they're bombarded with content. But how I have been able to, in the past, convince an elected official to support an issue I care about is that one-on-one -on -one relationship, which can almost border on nagging, but the outreach, the taking one key bit of information from those excellent reports you shared and saying, here, Justin Hodge, my commissioner, this is the one important thing I want you to understand, and here's why. And keep that. And the other thing is encourage people who are in the same district to try to build that kind of relationship with the commissioner. I would encourage everybody to take advantage of Ashley's um, offer to try to get on people's calendars, get a meeting, and keep meeting with them. It isn't a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we've uh, prioritized issues in our annual report, and I think that gives them a base of things to begin to keep talking to them about. But um, I feel convinced that that, although it's very hard and time consuming and frustrating uh, is important because we're supposed to give them the information they need to be able to make the best decisions they can. Allison? Yeah, um, so quick question for me, because I am a general member, but I also live in um, Justin Hodges district. If I wanted to reach out, should I still reach out to the person that represents my district where I live, or do I have more free reign because as I'm a general um, member of the COA? I think you could reach out to all of them. I would say start with Justin. I mean, he has um, Commissioner Hodge as your district's representative would have more interest in, in what you have to say representing people in your district. But because as an at-large member, you also represent, you know, more than just that, I you can definitely reach out to okay. commissioners. Well, Elizabeth, I I would plan to reach out to Justin, so I hope that's okay as well. And then oh kind of yeah, and um, Justin is very supportive. Oh yeah, of I talk our with work, them and I think what might be helpful, and actually this is for all the commissioners, if you have a person who's impacted by these issues. 
who has that compelling story that Margaret has suggested and be able to help connect him to that person with the compelling story. So I have one more thing I wanted to mention, and it's kind of more directed towards Annie. I know we had, I had, it had been mentioned a couple times, not in recent commissioner meetings, but in the past as one of the things to kind of help the county in general with bringing in funding and matching funding for a lot of the projects that are doing, whether it be for climate change, aging, you know, infrastructure, all those kind of things, parks and rec. Um, and there was like a discussion of like potentially hiring like a grant writer, like um, a commissioner on grant writing or something or some kind of role like that. And that could be really helpful for, you know, there's a lot of leveraging dollars for older adult services. There's a huge one right now that's worth like a million dollars a year. It's And it's $4 million in total that is meant to be countywide and innovative and intergenerational and building support through um, senior centers. And so that would be a great project for someone at the county level if they were a grants administrator, a grant writer um, to them work on with the COA, with various aging sector. And that could help um, You know, when you look at leveraging that millage dollars. And to that point, um, now that I'm working in Lucas County, they actually, four or five years ago, they actually implemented that where they have a paid person who is a grant writer who works with the different municipalities as well. And so far in five years, they've raised $86 million of additional funding for Lucas County, Ohio. So I think I've, I'm meeting with that person in a week or so because I'm really interested in finding out, um, one, how that happened, how they got that role um, at the county and how it's been so, success, so successful in like just three to five years. That's impressive. Yeah. So I don't know if any of that's something still like for consideration for the county to maybe hire for that kind of role. Seems like a good OCED. Mm -hmm. um, any other questions, comments? Bruce. Um. Allison's point, I think, is a very concrete example of what I'm trying to get across that we need to be doing more of as a body. Um, we need to have that kind of thinking. We need to have those kind of recommendations. We need to have that kind of hopefully follow through that can result in things like that. And I, I'm just I guess I'm just asking a question. What's the best way for us to have that conversation other than just, you know, waiting for our monthly meetings where we have a fair amount of other things always on the docket and our subcommittees are an opportunity to at least have a little bit of exploration, but that's with, you know, three or four other colleagues. And so I'm, I just think we we're we're stuck right now in the process that we've created to do come to talk with ourselves and with others. And is there any way that we could break out of that and have, you know, a half a day retreat where we're in the same place and we have a facilitated meeting to talk about how to function more effectively, not just how to address some of these issues that are important, but to get the resources to think beyond what what are our next steps once the, you know, the community foundation report comes out um, to be to be more ready to do some things and to have some capability to do those things. Because otherwise, I think we're just going to be taking such baby steps. We're all going to be dead and gone before there's a, an aging, you know, um, structure in place that we would really feel is what we what we would like to have happen sooner. So um, I'm just my frustration is obvious, but I, it's it's really built out of the fact that we have so much as a county to offer, and we have so much to build on, and we we just seem to settle for less than what we could be doing. Bruce, I think that's a great idea uh, to have a retreat and to discuss some of the issues that you have just brought up. I like that idea. Mm -hmm. um, I would say as far as you, you mentioned, you liked the idea that Allison had and how do we how do we get 
um, someone to take action on that, especially since we're an advisory body. Um, we made the official recommendations for the Office on Aging and for the senior millage, and they're talking about it. They're talking about it. And so if there's something this group agrees that needs like, yeah, we, we should really move on that. We should, we should, you know, do something about that. It appears when we pass up memos and especially recommendations, they talk about it. Um, and, and I, I agree we should have, a I I think, a I don't know that I could pull off an all day retreat, to be honest with you, with, with how my schedule is, uh, work and family and such. But, um, I like that idea of being able to talk more about what all of that is. We would still have to follow open meetings act and, and that kind of thing too, just as an FYI. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think some of the the structure that you're frustrated with is the structure that we're required to follow by the mm -hmm. county. And and I mean, kind of Bruce, it sounds like you would be a good commissioner, you know, if you want to be the person pushing more action and like actually taking some of those actions, um, there might be other opportunities and roles for you greater than than what's here right now. Elizabeth, I saw your hand go up. Yeah, um, I think it is true that specific recommendations do get attention. I would like to suggest that um, we put on the agenda for either a next meeting or when it's appropriate, um, a discussion about a county grants officer. Um, I think that is fascinating. It sounds like Allison is already uh, started doing the work about getting information about how it works for other counties. Um, and that seems to me to tie in with every single issue we've been discussing. Financial resources are key. So perhaps that might be an agenda item for discussion mm -hmm. if people other folks think that would be a good idea yeah and next meeting allison would you be able to report out on what you learn i'm not going to be in the country so i would not be able to but i could type something up. i'm trying to get on this person's calendar he's like wildly busy um so well, I'm, yeah I'm when you're trying pulling to stalk him if he's after dollars. hours doing something and um get connected I have a message into his assistant and we're trying to find a date in the next couple of weeks. So once I get that, I can kind of write it up um, as just like an executive summary for the group, even though I won't be here. Awesome. <clears throat> Thank you. Is um, Annie still in the meeting, uh, Marie? Her box is here. I'm oh, yeah. here. It's like, okay. Uh, Annie, and then is that? Has that ever been any discussion for the county that you're aware of, having a grant writer? Uh, well, I mean, kind of. We have we. It's part of. Um, it's complicated. Uh, yeah, I, I feel like with the climate resiliency office, that was one of the reasons why we established that. So, um. We don't really have like just, okay. well, you can't really have just one person to do that because even one grant is a lot to handle. So um, it's not something that's not been talked about, but it's it just, it's complicated. So great. Any other new business comments, questions? Just a FYI, just a, for my own information, but is the County Board of Commissioners the only way that the scope and priorities and um, direction of the county get shaped? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if that body is... I'm trying to put this as barely as possible, but if right. that body is not functioning as well as it could be, why would we believe that it could continue to do bigger and better things without some kind of additional assistance or 
help or something. If they, for example, if they can't even bring on people to raise more money in a way that, as Andy suggests, is complicated, um, how would we expect them to really be able to take to heart and implement an office of aging and, you know, short of us raising the money through a millage? Or how would they be able to do anything above and beyond that? Because if they don't have the capacity to think bigger and act bigger, um, even though they're a, a county that is, I think, does so many things well. Sorry, that's a bunch of dogs in the, the house I'm staying at. Um, how, how do we think that it's, it's going to end up any differently than it has for for a long time? And that's, you know, I, I, I understand commissioners' jobs are not easy. I understand they're well-meaning, but they're not functioning well. Um, it doesn't take a an expert to see that. Um, and I, I know that I'm, you know, stepping on some, perhaps on some toes here, but um, yeah, it's like we need we need to have a different way of working with them, helping you know the county, and I just think we're just, we're not thinking broadly enough and creatively enough how to do that. I'll stop there. Annie? Yeah, I, we have plenty of staff that write grants within the county. It's just individualized based on departments. Um, and I just, to be honest and transparent, it's hard for me to engage when the conversations go this way on the call for this commission, um, just because my, my other colleagues aren't here and staff that, you know, are responsible for administrating departments throughout the county aren't here. And I I feel like I do need to like, you know, say that we we have room to improve, but it's not that we're not thinking bigger. I think that's part of why we have this commission. Um, and I'm, I'm not trying to be defensive, but I just don't, I can't co-sign some of the comments that get made sometimes that are super um, negative about what's going on at the county because we are trying to improve services and expand. And I hope that my colleagues support putting a millage up um, but I just, you know, it's hard for me to engage um, sometimes. And part of it's it's a hard position to be in as a liaison for this. And I understand some of the frustration. Um, and so I just wanted to share that we, you know, if we do um, establish an office on aging, that would be one of the, the things that could happen within that department. Uh, and it, it's, it, it's just hard to answer sometimes because these, types of things happen. We have 1,400 employees, a bunch of different departments, and so grants are being applied for all the time, and there's there's many grants that we've gotten in OCED for various things um, annually. Um, so when I say things are complicated, it's because they are, and I've only been on the board for 16 months, and I'm not in different department meetings, and I don't know every employee and what grants they're writing and, and, and what have you. So, um, all that to say, I think that the fact that we have a commission on aging is a step in the right direction. And it shows that, well, you know, the people who helped establish this did want to think bigger. Um, and I am hoping that my colleagues, a majority of us agreed to put up a millage. Um, so for what it's worth, I just wanted to share that. Yeah. And again, Bruce, I would emphasize the relationship that you build with your commissioner, um, or even if you have you know, connections with, with other commissioners just by, based on your network and things. Um, those relationships really do go a long way in seeing, I mean, it's, it's back to the storytelling, right? Like if you can have the relationship, if you can build the rapport, they can see the need in a much clearer, more passionate way, and they can follow your passion. Um, we, this is part of county government. It moves at a different pace than than what we would we would like. Um, and so we just have to find, you know, the the paths of resistance. And I, I really do emphasize the relationship building. Um, Elizabeth. I think um advisory commissions are such an interesting animal because that's what we do is advise. 
and we don't actually run programs. We mm -hmm. don't um, apply directly for grants. There are lots of things that are what we do. And sometimes it can seem frustrating, I think, that we go, hey, we're giving advice and what's happening. But I think Marie's comments are very just and Annie's comments are, are very just. I mean, the Board of Commissioners has found a commission, founded a commission to raise these issues. The fact that we have had both adjacent and now Annie, commissioners who are devoting what really is a very significant chunk of their time to our meetings and listening to the issues and taking it back to the other commissioners, I think uh, is impressive. Uh, and shows the county commissioner's desire to truly get input. Um, so I I think on my part, I, I am grateful for the opportunity we have to make recommendations and uh, really grateful for the amount of time both the county commissioners and staff like Ashley have devoted to us, I think it it's in the nature of the beast of an advisory commission that um, that's our role is to make recommendations and help highlight issues. And the commissioners are indeed the folks who take the action. This has been great discussion. Any final comments, questions, Phyllis? Yeah, I'm wondering if um, if there are a couple of commissioners who have <clears throat> questions, concerns <clears throat> that um, would it make sense for them to come to one of our meetings to to try to find out it. It seems like what I've experienced having talked to two commissioners and what I'm hearing from others is that what they say and what they're believing inside or knowing or questioning inside are two different things and it's really hard for us to to do anything to make our advice known to them uh and just giving advice it you know it's like i could tell my children and i could advise them in a lot of ways and and they're going to do what they please well then I, I recognize Bruce's frustration, like, okay, what we don't want to be wasting our time. We want to make a difference for the lives of the older adults in um, in the county. So would it make sense to bring to invite them in as guests for even a 10 minute session to learn where they're coming from. Annie? Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, I would encourage folks to tune in um, on the 17th to get a better understanding. Um, you can kind of learn a lot based on some of the things that are said at the board table, and that'll help you understand both where people are coming from, where they could use some help in getting a better understanding. I also think that once we get the mapping that the uh, Ann Arbor Area Community Foundation um, is doing and that gets presented to the commissioners, it's gonna be hard for people to not acknowledge where the needs are and the gaps in the system. Um, you know, one of the things that I highlighted um, and Marie highlighted a little bit of a bigger number, still under $100,000 a year in our general fund that we're even putting towards older adults. Um, and so I, I would just encourage folks to watch the meeting or attend it. Um, it's complicated. All nine of us are different. We all navigate 
our roles differently and engage with constituents differently. Um, and I, I don't want to put words in any of my colleagues' mouths or make it seem like one one or a handful are not supportive, because I really don't know. Um, I'm not, again, in private conversations that they're having with other people, uh, but I do think the things that get set at the board table are very relevant and how um, hey. commissioners that are their counterpart on this commission um, can help engage them and, and, and get them to see this as more of a, a priority for the county. Uh, but I think, you know, to be honest, inviting them to this is probably not going to be any different than the public comments that uh, I know many of you feel like have gone kind of unfurred. So um, I think watching the next meeting, seeing how that conversation goes will help you all understand where everybody's at and where the strengths and weaknesses are um, for each individual commissioner. Um, that's my my best advice. Um, and then also, if you have, you know, engaging people in, in your individual district to engage them too. Yeah. Um, and so it's not just you, but all of you, I'm sure, have friends in your in your community that live in the, the commissioner that you um, are the counterpart to's district. So I would also just encourage that as well. Thank you. Bruce? Um, first of all, I want to just say that I've worked in three different governments and I'm a big believer in government and I understand the possibility, the potential, and I understand the limitations. And I, you know, I don't, uh, Annie's comments about, you know, 1800 people working. I think government has been a real positive force when it's, when it's been able to, I think it's been hampered a lot over the last years. I think government has been attacked unfairly and I think it's been underfunded um, I think people are being asked to do a whole lot more with a whole lot less. A lot of good people have gotten out of government for reasons, you know, that unfort are unfortunate that we could use more good people in government. So, and I'm appreciative of the fact that Washington County is a better place than almost any place in the state and maybe almost any place in the, in the country. And I, and I think we're repeatedly leaders in a lot of ways. Um, part of my frustration grows out of that. I'll try to follow Allison's suggestion at our subcommittee about, you know, how can we lead with um, solutions as opposed to complaints? Um, and I guess the thing I would like to th think we could do a better job of as a group is really put some muscle behind our overall recommendations, not our individual recommendations as they sort of come up from, you know, moment to moment, but finding some way to really come up with a more robust way of thinking about aging in the county that would make Washington County proud. Um, and we could really claim, you know, like we do in a lot of other areas to be one of the best, if not the best. Um, I think, you know, we have a limited amount of time and a limited amount of resources with which to work, but I think we sell ourselves short in terms of what we can do as an advisory body. And so I would like us to just think about what, what would be a way we could become the most, you know, uh, the most um, encouraging and supportive and forward-thinking uh, advisory body on aging th that's possible. Um, and I think that would be a way to try to provide a more positive role, play a more positive role and provide more positive suggestions to people. So it's... Um, you know, it's it's just a matter of how we choose to function as an advisory group and how we can really, if our only true vehicle is as, as advisors and making recommendations, how do we make the most comprehensive and forward-thinking set of recommendations? Because I think what follows, and I'll, I'll stop after this, but what follows after that is then 
the next steps we would take would be how can we be more helpful on raising resources? How can we be more helpful on communicating? How can we be helpful on coordinating some of this? How can we be more helpful on drawing from some of the wonderful work that has gone on over the last 20 years around aging? Um, you know, all those kinds of things. What What's the vehicle for that? And how we could talk to Chris Lemon about trying to get some additional resources to help us in that way. I just think we need to have, we need to think big and act, you know, and, and, and have a big ask if we're going to get, you know, anywhere down the road. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? All right, our next meeting is May 3rd. Um, do we, I forget, do we need a motion to adjourn? We need a motion, but we don't need a roll call. So, so moved to adjourn. Elizabeth moved. Margie seconds. All in favor, thumbs up, raise your hand. Great. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in May.